You've probably seen the tech news over the past few weeks. The Nintendo Switch has been officially hacked. With an apparent simple method that works by shorting two pins on the right Joy-Con to boot the Switch into recovery mode or RCM. With this mode, it's possible to upload a payload to patch and exploit the device. When I read these stories, I normally don't get too excited. Usually the console manufacturer is quick to patch these issues, but this time around, this is an inherent hardware flaw with the Nvidia Tegra chipset, and short of a new hardware revision, which is rumored to be coming, every single switch out there is exploitable. And that's where it gets interesting. For the total cost of zero dollars, anyone can exploit their Nintendo Switch and be able to run homebrew and emulators. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to exploit the Nintendo Switch, set up a development environment, and show you my work in progress of Cannonball, the OutRun engine that I ported over to the Nintendo Switch in about five hours. Let's go ahead and check it out. So, before I walk through how I performed the exploit, a few things. First, this is not my discovery, so credit where credit is due. I've left links in the description below about the origins of this exploit and where everything you need comes from. And second, if this exploit gets you banned from online, bricks your device or something else that results in a dead unit, I take no responsibility. The goal of this video is to determine what's involved in writing or porting over software to the Nintendo Switch with the exploit and homebrew development tools. Now we want to keep this 100% legal and not use any proprietary Nintendo libraries or an official SDK. And the good news, all that is available today. So first things first, if you want to start writing homebrew for the Nintendo Switch, you will need a way to exploit the Switch. And to do that, you're going to need a way to boot your Switch into recovery mode or RCM. Once you are in recovery mode, you will need a method to push a payload to the Switch, which is known as Fuse Jelly and then boot into a custom firmware and run the homebrew launcher in order to run homebrew code on. Sound complicated? Well, it's actually pretty simple. So first, let's talk about booting into recovery mode. You've probably seen pictures of paper clips, tin foil, wires, and 3D printed plastic jigs. All of these methods will work. And the way this works is on the right Joy-Con connector, what you need to do is bridge pin 10 with a ground pin, which can be either of pins 1, 7 or 9. Now I'm going to talk about two methods that work for me. First, the 3D plastic jig method. The plastic jig houses a piece of wire that bridges pin 1 with pin 10. If you are someone that doesn't want to risk damaging their Joy-Con or Switch, then I recommend picking up one of these. They are sold everywhere on eBay for about 5 bucks, and they are simple to use. In order to use the jig, just slide it into the right Joy-Con rail in place of the Joy-Con and leave it there. And the second method that I've tried, I've dubbed the tinfoil trick. By utilizing a small piece of tin foil and folding it until it's about one millimeter in thickness, I use it to bridge pins nine and 10 on the Joy-Con and then tape it into place. As you can see, it's not very aesthetically pleasing, but it works. I keep my Joy-Con docked and never need to remove it. It works every time. I would strongly recommend, however, the plastic jig over this method, but if you take your time, this method works just fine. Make sure the tin foil is taped down securely. You certainly don't want small shards of foil coming loose and shorting out other pins. Now there are other methods that work for people, but these two methods have worked just fine for me. If anyone has another method of getting their Nintendo Switch into RCM mode and they recommend it, please let me know in the comments below. Now the next thing we need to do is copy the homebrew launcher and other files onto the Nintendo Switch SD card. So go ahead and remove your SD card from the Switch and then browse through the Hecate website and download the sdcard.zip file and extract the contents of it to the root folder of the SD card. You'll also want to create a folder called Switch. This is where your homebrew files will be located and this is where the homebrew launcher will scan for your homebrew files. Finally, you will need a method of pushing the Fuse Jelly payload to the Switch. There are a few different ways to do this. My method is to use my Android phone. From the same site that you download the SD card files from, download payload.bin onto your device, and then sideload the app called NX Loader and select the payload.bin. This tells the NX Loader to use the selected payload. 
There's also a web launcher that I'll link below if you don't have an Android phone, but this doesn't work on Windows. So if you do want to use Windows and don't have access to an Android phone, I recommend a program called Tegra RCM Smash. So now that you have your plastic jig in place or your tin foil connected to your Joy-Con and bridge points 1 and 10 or 10 and 9, hold down the volume button on your Switch and then press the power button and hold it there for about 1 to 2 seconds. If nothing happens, you are successfully in RCM mode. If it boots to the Switch logo, then your jig or tin foil trick isn't bridging the points properly. So go ahead and verify your work. So once the switch is in RCM mode, connect your USB cable from your switch to the device with the payload, in this case my Android phone. As you can see, the phone prompts me if I want to proceed. And if you'd rather use Windows, go ahead and download the RCM GUI program onto your PC. The first time you launch the program, it will ask you if you want to install the APX driver. Go ahead and do this. Now launch the Tegra RCM GUI and connect your USB cable from the switch to the PC. And if you are in RCM mode, the graphic will change from red to green to indicate that you are good to go. Now select the payload.bin file and click inject. If successful, you will see this on the Switch's display. This means you have successfully exploited your Nintendo Switch. From here, press the power button and then use the volume up button to select CFW and press power again. This will boot into the Switch, which on first glance looks normal, but pressing the photo album icon will boot you into the homebrew launcher and you should be good to go. Now we have our Nintendo Switch all set up and ready to port some code over and write some homebrew. So you want to write some code or port something over to the Nintendo Switch, where do you begin? The best place to start is the website known as switchbrew.org. From here, follow the link to installing the homebrew development environment known as DevKit Pro. This is a fully legal homebrew development kit that allows you to develop and build Switch apps and run them under the homebrew launcher. DevKit Pro has been around for many years and is quite established and easy to use, but the Switch support is still very basic at this time, but we've already seen some emulators and homebrew running, so it's a very promising start. Go ahead and install DevKit Pro, and once you've completed that, launch the MSYS2 icon. This will open up your Unix-based terminal where you will be developing and compiling your code. There are some additional libraries that you probably want to install first before you get started, including SDL2, zip libraries and more. To do this in the command line of msys, go ahead and type pacman-sl. This will list the additional libraries that are available. For example, if you wanted to port SDL games to the Switch, you would first need to install the SDL2 library. So type pacman-s switch dash sdl2 this will install the switch sdl2 libraries to link to in the devkit pro folder there are some examples to try first i recommend this to anyone as it's a good first step to get familiar with the development environment go into the graphics folder and select the project called hello world now go ahead and type make this will compile up the hello world program for the switch So the next question is, how do we run this program on our Switch? What you need to do is take out the SD card from your Switch and insert it back into the PC. Under the Switch folder we created earlier, go ahead and create another folder called Hello World. The name of the folder doesn't matter. DevKit Pro will generate an executable Switch file with the extension .nro. This is what the Homebrew Launcher is looking for. So drop your hello world.nro file into the folder you created and then insert the SD card back into the Nintendo Switch. Unfortunately, when you remove the SD card from your Nintendo Switch, you need to restart the device. This means booting back into recovery mode and uploading the payload all over again. This is one of the main bottlenecks with homebrew development on the Switch currently as it requires constant rebooting and rejigging. However, there is another method that you can try that will save you quite a bit of time. More on that shortly. For now, let's go back to the Hello World program. Boot your Switch into RCM, jump back into the Homebrew Launcher, and you will see the Hello World program in the folder. Go ahead and launch it, and there you have it. Welcome to the world of Homebrew on the Nintendo Switch. You just compiled up your first program. 
So for the next thing I did, I decided to see if I could port something quickly to the Nintendo Switch to see how well things worked and what was possible. For this, I chose Cannonball, the OutRun engine. I'm quite familiar with this codebase as I ported it over to the Commodore Amiga last year and I knew it would compile very cleanly. I didn't want to fight fixing compiler errors, rather just wanted to get something up and running as quickly as possible. So I downloaded the source code to Cannonball. It uses SDL2 and C++. By simply tweaking the make file to look for the switch dependencies, the code compiled up fairly quickly. In order to run Cannonball, you need a copy of the MAME ROMs of OutRun. So with the ROMs and the executable, I copied them over to my SD card into my Switch subfolder, and when I launched it on my Nintendo Switch, I got a black screen. Nothing happened. But in the end, I put in some print statements in the code and determined it was hitting the main emulation loop and executing correctly. So with just a few minor tweaks to the way SDL2 is initialized on the Nintendo Switch, the display was working and OutRun came alive on my Nintendo Switch. In the end, this whole process took me about five hours. Now I did say earlier there was another method to speed up homebrew development and that's by using emulators. There are two known Switch emulators right now. One is called Yuzu and the other one is called Ryu Jinx. And both of them work pretty well with homebrew. As you can see, my port of Cannonball is running on the Yuzu emulator. Now this is pretty cool for making sure that things run successfully before you transfer your files over to the Nintendo Switch and have to run the RCM jig every single time. Using an emulator in this fashion is a very good time saver and allows you to quickly debug and make sure that your code is executing correctly. And once satisfied that your code is running the way you want it to, go ahead and copy it to your SD card and try it out on the Nintendo Nintendo Switch. So in conclusion, this is a very, very exciting time for the Nintendo Switch scene. We're still very much in the very early stages of this particular scene and things are going to explode. In fact, things are already moving at a very fast rate and I personally haven't felt this much excitement in a scene since the PSP days back in the mid 2000s and that's a long time ago. Now I think there's going to be so many more innovations and enhancements to things that come out from the Nintendo Switch scene. Now my port of Cannonball is available on my GitHub page. It's still not finished, it's a work in progress, but I'll leave a link in the description below. If you are interested, you can download the source code and compile it yourself. And if you have some patches that you want to submit to me, please go ahead and do so. I'm going to continue working on it when I get spare time, but I am planning on releasing it. And I also have another secret port that I'm working on, which is going to be coming out at some point as well. So stay tuned for that. And of course, in my normal fashion, I will make a reveal video showing that particular port off. So stick around for that. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at the exploit for the Nintendo Switch as well as setting up a development environment for it. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about this video. If you have any questions about the development environment or the Nintendo Switch exploit, please leave a comment below. I want to see as many people get involved in homebrew and emulation development as possible. I think the possibilities are awesome and I'm really looking forward to seeing more people get on board with the development. We've already seen some really good things come out already, including things like Game Boy Advance emulation, Super Nintendo emulation, but really we've only scratched the surface. We haven't really gotten into the big meaty stuff yet. So I'm really looking forward to what comes out of this scene. There's going to be so much more to come. Well guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.